welcome to Meet the Biz. Today, we have a beautiful woman who is beautiful inside out, uh, an amazing actress who is just so real and so uh, full of breath. She is a regular on Grey's Anatomy. She is, was a regular on Jericho, Weeds. She's done Supernatural, ER, The Division. She's a mother and she's amazing. Shoshana Stern. Hello, Shoshana. Hello, hello, hi. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, thank you for being here. You're so beautiful. Of course, of course. L listen, I was reading your bio and I saw that you grew up in the Bay Area. Yes, that's true. Because I did too. I was like, oh my God, we were neighbors. San Mateo. Where are you from? San Mateo. Oh yes, I know that area. Yeah, yeah. And you grew up, uh, you went to temple and had a bat mitzvah? Me? Oh no. I didn't get that. No. Uh, when I was growing up in Fremont, we moved from Walnut Creek. And at first, we were the only deaf family that went to Temple there. So they did provide an interpreter once in a while. Not every Friday. But, and they didn't provide an interpreter for our Sunday school. Now my father, he had his bar mitzvah. He grew up in New York City, but they didn't have any interpreters for him. And he remembers when he would be the only deaf sitting there, not understanding a thing. And so he felt that he had three deaf children and that all of them, he didn't want them to have that same experience. So he made it our option. If we wanted to go to Sunday school without an interpreter. We didn't choose that. That must have been difficult. So I did not have a bat mitzvah. Okay. That, so they didn't have an interpreter at Temple? Well, when I was little, I mean, yeah, when I was young, I didn't think anything of it. But now when I look back, I do wish I would have had the patience for it. You know, it would have been hard, yes, without an interpreter, but my dad did it. And I know I could have done it too, you know. Right, right. Um, it's interesting. I was thinking about my bar mitzvah. I just put up, I was looking through all my old boxes and I found my old bar mitzvah certificate. So when I saw that you grew up and um, uh, that you went to temple, I was like, oh, you know, wanted to ask about that. But, and it's interesting to, to, to get that different viewpoint of, of somebody who is deaf or hard of hearing. Um, and what some of us, you experience what I don't and vice versa, but that's for each and every person. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I saw, and I'm relating in, uh, that two of your grandmother, grandmothers were Holocaust survivors. Um, and were, did, your grand, did anyone pass in the war uh, during the Holocaust? Yes, my mother's mother was a survivor. She's the only one left. Her whole family is gone. She had a sister. Uh, her sister had already moved to America before the war. Thank heavens. But the whole family was lost in the war. Yeah, I. it's interesting because I never met my... Uh, I met only one grandmother, um, 
And with her family, she had, I believe, seven brothers and a sister. And half of the brothers were wiped out, as well as her sister and her mother. So my great grandmother. It's, uh, and it's interesting. I bring this up too, because so many people out there are trying to deny the Holocaust. So when I hear of somebody, when I read on your IMDb about that, I was going just, you know, the connection that, that we have to say, hey, you know, our, we never got to meet some of our family. It seems like there are a lot of people trying to deny what's happening today. And I think it just says a lot about humans, what that we try not to think about difficult things. And that denial that they happen will make history repeat itself again. Yeah. Well, talking about history, you are making history in other ways. Um, I was, I mean, I knew you were a stunning actress. One of my favorite movies actually is The Hammer, uh, which you were one of the leads in. Um, did you enjoy doing that film? Yes, definitely. I felt like with that movie, it was really unique because it showed it portrayed the deaf. Yes, it was his journey to become a wrestler. I mean, it was a wrestling movie, but it was really much more about how he found language. He struggled as a wrestler. He wasn't very good because he didn't have any language. And until he found his community and found his language, and then he was able to be a successful wrestler. And I think that's very interesting, you know, a, a deaf experience, a true deaf experience, you know, and you have to find your community. You don't always get your language from day one. You're not born into your community sometimes. You have to search and find it. So I was really fascinated by that, how they showed it. It was very interesting. It was very cool to see, you know, this sports movie with a lot of athletes that guys like to go see. But at the same time, it had depth of story. And I hadn't seen something like that at that time. So it was really important for me and very special for me to be a part of that. Yeah. Well, it was... I mean, visually stunning and the story and the characters, it had so many levels and depth to it. So it was really beautiful. Um, and one thing I remember too with the, the visual, it was also audio where they muffled the sound and it made us even be pulled in more into the film. Um, so when did you know you wanted to act? At birth. <laughs> yeah, it seems that's what my mother says. That's what she said. She said that when I was growing up in the Bay Area, um, we were up there and it's not like we were close to Hollywood or anything or any big acting community. But my mother said that I asked her for an agent. Uh, I asked her for an agent. Um, yeah. I had asked her for an agent for my fifth birthday. And I said, Mom, I want an agent. And I don't know how I knew what an agent was. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it was popular. I, I don't know. And I asked my mom, I said, Mom, how did I know? And she said, I wish I knew. So I don't know. Did you have an agent in the Bay Area before you moved to L.A.? Oh, no, no, she did not let me have an agent. I got an agent, I think, when I was about 21. Okay. Well, that's a good age to get an agent. You finish school and, and, and uh, yeah, I, I've heard sometimes it's not good to be a child star. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Oh, no, I'm so happy my mother told me no. 
and my daughter, she's five. She's five. And it's different for her because she grew up in Hollywood and she goes to the sets on my shows and she'll watch and sometimes she'll yell, cut. <laughs> she yells, cut. <laughs> I say, no, no, that's not your job. That's not your job. But she wants to act. And so it's easy for me to provide her with that experience with my shows and her friends. But would I let her go through that, the audition at five? No, no. Or, I mean, like the theater for schools and classes, that's a different thing. And I would give her that. But the business can be really tough. I mean, even for me, but definitely not for five. Moms decide they make the right choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, she's so beautiful. I mean, and she has this charisma. I mean, I could see the two of you doing a project together one of these days. Well, I think so. Well, I think she did. She did steal the show. She stole the show when she came to my show. So we had a scene together. It got caught, the scene. But I was supposed to walk up to her, see her on the street, and I was supposed to say, to tell her, you're beautiful. Tell her you're beautiful. But she stole my line. She stole my line. She said, she signed, oh, you are beautiful. And the director said, hey, I think she did a better job. <laughs> she was better. So I just let her go. Right. They'll tell you, okay, um, your daughter is now the doctor. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So what thrills you in life? What thrills you? I think trying different things. Uh, I like to stretch myself. To learn new things. That, I like that. Um, I, it's special, especially when I started writing. I thought it was going to be different than acting. But I, I didn't realize, no. It's not. People will expect the same things from you. Um, oh, you're a comedy writer, so you're going to write a comedy for me. You can write that. Uh, but a writer, I mean, an actor does different things. A writer can write different things. Why would you want to make the same show again and again and again? Why do that? I've already done that before. I want to try something different, something else. It's like, you know, the same thing with acting, different roles, uh, and producing. Um, I want to produce. I, I want to try different things. Beside producing, I mean, you create, you created your own show. Yes. And you are, you have been, God, reoccurring roles in Weeds. Jericho, The Close, Threat Matrix, I could go on. So to have this career that you have is, is stunning. I'm happy you think so. <laughs> but it's hard in this business because people actually only see the iceberg. It's like an iceberg. You know, the tip, they see the tip, they don't see, you know, the 80%, the 90% of the failures. There's a lot of failures. So I'm grateful for all my successes, but for every wonderful sh job that I've had, there have been many disappointments, losses, rejections, and really suffering for myself. I've suffered myself, and it's not just, but I just have to keep going.
Well, the interesting thing about you too is you you have fun with it. You go with it, but you have no pretense. You are real. You're down to earth, and it's not I'm an actress kind of thing. That is the worst. Just the worst. It's just going to get you a punch in the face. Yeah. Uh, um, it is interesting how it does do that. And it's, it's just so much, I mean, especially in this day and age, it's so good to be real and down to earth and loving. Um, we need more of that. And, and you are one of those, one of those people. Um, uh, what, so because of the p pandemic, your show is put on hold, Grey's Anatomy. Um, but, uh, so how are you dealing with the time off? I've surprisingly found other ways to be creative um, in ways that I didn't expect. Like um, when I started the hashtag, um, for it's a hashtag Operation ASL Storytime. So I I wanted to elevate sign language storytelling for deaf children who were had to stay at home. And because most deaf children are from hearing families, and so they don't have access to sign language. And I was thinking about that. And there are so many stories by famous actors, by different people that are for hearing children. Uh, but there's nothing for deaf children. So I decided I would make the hashtag. And then it became a community effort. I put it out there, the sign language story telling for children. And then I really wanted to explain why it was so important. Because people didn't understand why the reason behind it. And they said, oh, well, we already have story time for hearing children. It should be fine for deaf people, but it's not. So I wrote, I wrote something. I wrote an article and somehow uh, it became, it got out there. And so the New York Times, um, the New York Times, the newspaper, the newspaper, um, the New York Times published it, published the article, my article about that. It was for their Modern Love, it was Modern Love, the section they have, and they published the article there. And if it hadn't been for that blessing for being put out there, for it being put out there, I nev never would have been, you know, published in the New York Times. So it's strange how things happen, and I feel like it's, it's very good for me to stretch myself and to be creative like that. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's, it, it, you're just doing so many things, and I mean, to be on, I mean, to get on that show, to get on um, Grey's Anatomy, how was it? How was it to get on that? I mean, I remember your first scene. I've got to, I've, if we can show it, I'm going to show it here. Maddie's 13. I should have years before she's in the kissing stage. What about Scott Thompson? Oh, well, that was different. He gave me a sticks record. Well, maybe Taylor gave Maddie something. Wait, Maddie kissed Taylor? Yeah. Taylor Olson. Yeah. Good morning, Hadley. Suzanne, how are you feeling? <sighs> she's been digging up dirt on you. It's called research. I didn't exactly have to do a lot of digging. Hospital hell. You see that article? That piece was intended to highlight weaknesses within the entire healthcare system. And the surgeon who wrote it actually recently came back to work here. You're, you're not going to find better, more competent care in the whole Northwest. Um, can I help you? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Dr. Lauren Riley. Right. I'm here for a consult with Dr. Meredith Gray. It's nice to meet you, Miss Britland. Suzanne. And you are 
She is our master diagnostician. Oh, thank God. I'm gonna ask about a billion questions and run even more tests. I'll annoy you greatly, but in the end, it will be worth it, okay? I like you already. I want a full autoimmune panel, a pericardial fluid culture, and a cytology. Immediately. We already did those. Do them again. And page cardio, I need to know why the fluid is building up because it will happen again. And can you tell Dr. Gray I'm here already? Wow. The competence is just slapping me in the face right now. Okay. It's just amazing. You're, I mean, the power, this is what came to my mind, the power of silence, of quiet. Yet it's not, it's full. And that's the way it's perceived by some. Well, I think, well, it's a wonderful show. What's great about the show is, I mean, it's already a great show. The writing is brilliant. There are so many good aspects to it. Uh, it shows different experiences and it does it in a way that is not lecturing or like an after school special. It's really good. I mean, I've been a big fan of them and have watched it forever. The writing is excellent. The acting is great. And I always dreamed, and this is true, I dreamed that I would be a doctor on that show. And I don't know why I had that, but a deaf actor would have been, a doctor would be wonderful. And then a few years ago, I don't remember how many years ago it was, but I had an audition for a role. It was the role of a deaf patient, a patient. And inside, in, in my gut, I just felt that this is not my role. Uh, it's a role for someone else. It's a great role, but it wasn't mine. And my agent at the time didn't understand. And she said, so you don't want to go in? And I said, no, no, I don't want to go in. And she was like, why? And I said, well, it doesn't feel right. And she's like, well, why doesn't it feel right? And I said, because if I play the role of the patient, if I play a patient, I will never be able to be a doctor. And she's like, but, but Shoshana, it, it's just a deaf thing. It's not, it's, it's, it, the role isn't even offered to you. And I said, I know, but it's possible. It's possible that in the future, someday it could happen. So they fired me. I mean, they fired me. I, I, I totally understood. I mean, I, they gave me an audition and I turned it down for something that wasn't even real. And, I, and I, I understood. But, you know, as the years went by, years, years later, um, what happened was I was on a panel with uh, the showrunner. And uh, it was something... I was already a big fan of hers. She was a writer, had written many episodes and uh, wonderful, strong women roles. So I was excited to meet her and I felt like we had a connection and I felt like I connected with her and we were talking about the writer's strike, you know, the writer's strike. And we had this discussion and she said, do you need a job? And I just told her, I just said, I want to be a deaf doctor on your show. And I want to be a doctor. And she said, okay, let's set up a meeting. So I went into the meeting with them. And I thought it was going to be maybe just me going in and uh, talking about the deaf experience like that. And maybe I will have, they, they will have a deaf doctor role, but I didn't know if it would be me. But that would be okay. But when I went into the meeting and all the writers were there and I had my research, I had a bunch of ideas that I brought in. So I went into the meeting and the first thing they said was, we wrote a character for you and it's going to be a deaf doctor. 
I was so taken aback. I was like, wow. So uh, we sat there chatting about different ideas for about two hours. And the collaboration was so wonderful. It was wonderful. The writers are so intelligent. It was great. And I didn't see the script until a few days before filming, but it was great. They didn't even mention, they didn't even mention that she was deaf. They said nothing about it. I came in and there I was, and that was it. And that was wonderful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful the way you just come in like that. And it's beautiful that the windows and doors are opening up more and more in Hollywood. And hopefully the world. I think so. I hope so. And I see that people are now noticing deaf people on TV and they think it's amazing. But what they don't see is how much collaboration goes on behind the camera. There are so many people who are afraid. And I've, I've noticed that fear before. And it's, it's just a character way and a different perspective. You have to understand because when you write something, so many times you feel like it's your baby and then someone tries to snatch it away from you and you are very protective. No, it's my baby. But you feel like if you make a community surrounding that baby, then it will become stronger. And I think now people are starting to realize, to recognize that and feel like we can become parents to that character a little more. It's that collaboration with everyone. And it's not just the actor or the writer or the director or even the editors. I mean, the editors, <laughs> editors, everyone has to collaborate together. And I think that it makes a beautiful thing. And I hope that this will become a model going forward on, uh, for minority characters to be portrayed. And through all of that, we have all the trees full of fruit. I know this is like a, you know, a visual, but it's just like the, 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 all the, the food will be there and it'll be rich with new, new stuff and stuff that's always been there, but stuff that we need to all accept and take in. And, you know, we're all one family here on, on this blue little marble, as I call it. I have two of our students. We have Dot, two of our students. Ditto. Yeah, ditto. Oh my God. I say this once in a while. That's one of my dad's messages. So that he used to say ditto all the time. Uh, like, I love you. And he would say ditto. He would say, I love you as well. But so I, I just got a little hello from dad. So thank you. Um, we have two wonderful students with us today. Uh, that are going to join us, da, 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 who have uh, some questions for you. Uh, there she is, Ranjani Reyes and Ashley Lyles. There she is, that's Shoshana Stern for you. <laughs> Hi, I'm a person now, I love it. Yes, yes, At, uh, Ranjani, you were saying about, you were, you're a big fan? Yes, I've been watching every time. Every week. Every week. <laughs> yeah, it's really. Thank you for watching. You're welcome. <laughs> so, Ron Johnny, you have a question. Okay, I have a question for you. Um, let's see. Um. We had the same birthday. I was born July 3rd. No way. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, oh, too. Tom Cruise. Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. Tom Cruise same. and you. We have the same birthdays with fireworks. And yeah. we'll see them. What is your favorite dramatic? scene of the the in the question that I mean was the cast and crew. I 
Actually, I like it when I'm fighting with Ellen Pompeo, the actress who plays Meredith Grey. And Grey is very、uh, multifaceted in her character and with two strong women. Um, who call each other out. And they're, they're both right. And I like that. You don't see that often, like that, especially with two women. And both of them are right most of the time. I mean, maybe one, one can be wrong, but both of them are equal, peers. They're both talented, they both respect each other, but both of them are, are, are different. People with different perspectives. And that's really cool. You, you know, one question that I had is do you, when you act,、uh, do you come from the inside, the outside? Do you do a mix? Do you, how, how do you create your characters? Always from the inside. Always inside first. Yeah, well, it shows to me. Um, Ashley Lyles, hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. First, I want to say that you're very, that you're very beautiful. And、um, I wanted to ask. Oh, thank you. You too. Being、um, deaf in the,、um, in the acting business, was it hard for you? I've never really had any other experience. I've never not been deaf. And in show business, honestly, I think it's tough for everyone. Everyone struggles in this business. I see so many actresses, women, I think they might have a harder time. I think it's harder for women once they reach a certain age. And I see some hearing actresses that you look up to and they seem like they work all the time, but they become stuck. They're just stuck. My nicer girl, I love you. <laughs> kisses, kisses, One. kisses. One, two, three. Love you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you.